that's fine. Um, so we're in the top of Lamad Aleph, Hamad Aleph. Tanya, Rabbi Yehuda Oimeh, Mishum Rabbi Akiva. Uh, <clears throat> so he's saying this in the name of Rabbi Akiva. And now we're going to go through um, the days as we know them. You may want to take a sitter, um, if you like, and to see how this actually follows. Yep, people have got... The Siddha are just after Olena, of course, when we've got the Shir Shelyom. We are excellent. The Shir Shelyom, well done. Um, and let's see how this follows, and we'll see what Rashi, how Rashi explains this. Why we say these particular days, uh, why we say these particular uh, chapters of Tehillim, or they did on those particular days of the week, and we'll see how it follows the days of creation. Um, as we move along here. So, Rabbi Yehuda, Oime Mishum Rabbi Akiva. Borishan Ma Hoya Oimrim, or Me Hoya Oimrim, I suppose. What did they say on the first day of the week and Sunday? Now, this follows, as we said from last week, where we, if you remember, um, we were talking about the Mishnah and how. They weren't sure what to say on Rosh Hashanah because was it Rosh Hashanah or not Rosh Hashanah? We won't go into that. But the link, as we often find in the Gemara, is as it's all oral. Um, so it, once you've got a comment, you often find that the subject matter continues in the same way. And that's why we spoke about the Tehillim that are said um, on Yom Tov 2. And I'll say more of that as we progress. So the Gemara digresses and says, well, what actually are the general Tehillim that are said? So let's have a look. Second line down. Borishan Mahoya Oimrim. And in fact, uh, you may find this is part of the davening um, of, depends which shul you're in, um, Musaf of Shabbos morning after Ein Kelokainus, sung hopefully with great gusto. Um, after that, it actually mentions this, which actually comes from a mission in Tomid, um, goes through the days of the week, but we're going to see, this is mentioned here in the Gemara. Let's pick it up here. As we know, on Sunday, what capital, what chapter do we say? And who we've got in our Gemara? Lashem ho oretz um Where we're finding this from Tehillim Chofdalad, chapter 24. Lashem ho oretz um To Hashem, or Hashem owns, if you like, to Hashem is the earth and everything contained in it. Um Why do we say that on this day? And notice Rashi tells us we say the whole chapter, Kol HaMizma, because if you remember last week we were splitting some of the chapters. This one we've said in total, as we know, chapter 24. Lashem Ho Oretz Umloya. Have a look at the Gemara, please. Al Shame, because. Uh, Shekono. What's what's Kono? Comments are acquired, acquired, of course, by the making of Shekono. Have a look at Rashi. Shekono, Shomayim Vooretz, heaven and earth, the full universe and beyond. Beyond, if we can understand that, get our hard to get your head around that. I'm afraid. Um, but yes, Shekono Shomayim Vooretz, which means, as we said, the the universe and everything else. Um, that's number one. And the Gemara continues and says, Hikno. Hikno, what's Hikno mean? From Loshan Kone in a Hifil, which means he gives over to. Um, have a look at Rashi, Hikno. Tevel le Yoshveva, ah, la Shem Oretz Maloya, Tevel the Yosh, that's the end of that posuk. That this world, 
the Yoshvivo and the inhabitants of it, and this world is given over to humans. Le Yoshvivo Koloma Koina Kedei Lahaknos. It was, if you like, when you say acquired, um, formed the whole universe, and the intention was to have this world populated with humans. So that's Hashem or Etzemeloyo. Baby Yoshua, that's the beginning the creation of Shemayim and Oretz. Um, that's why, of course, very appropriate. Um, we haven't finished yet, says the Gemara. V'shalit um, ba'olamo. What's shalit? Word shalit, shlita, normally means rule, ruling, yeah, uh, ruling over the v'shalit ba'olamo. Yechidi, alone, so that's Lashem or it's a Maloy or Tabe. We say Yosef, Yosef who has shalit, don't we? Yosef. Yeah, absolutely, very good. Yeah, Shalit, the, 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 the a, a ruler, quite right. Um, notice the word used here is a shalit, the, the, um, in the same way, this ruling over the world and there was and the universe, nothing else is has been created. Yechidi. The shalit ba'olomoi in his own world, in his own um, whatever whatever Hashem has created. Um, say uh, hard to get a, ha a head around a lot of this, but the idea of the Sunday being linking up with the first day of creation, Hashem ha'oret Yes, it will ultimately be handed over to humans. Yeah, Peter, if you could put. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Okay, that is day one. Well, then we move on to day two. Godol Hashem umahulo ma'od. Where is this taken from? You can see from the side of the Gemara. This is taken from Mem Ches, chapter 48. Godol Hashem umahulo ma'od. Great and muhulo, I suppose you say greatly praised umahulo ma'od. Godol Hashem Umla Miod, Be'ir Elokeinu, the rest of the posse, and you may have it around the side of your Gemara. Be'ir Elokeinu, Har Kotcho, I think you've got that posse there. Yeah. Godol Hashem Umla Miod, Be'ir Elokeinu, Har Kotcho, which means, um, Be'ir Elokeinu, in the city of our God, the, the mountain. Of His Holiness, hello, Malcolm. Four, four lines down, five lines down. Lamadalaf, Lamadalaf. We're going through the days of the week. Why that posuk? Why that chapter was sung on the second day of the week? Al shem shechilek maasov. What does it mean chilek maasov? Rashi says hivdil rokia. If we look at the Torah. If we look at day two of creation, we've got the Hivdil Rokia, the splitting up. Ben Elyonim Letachonim, above and below. Menis Ale, the Yoshav, Bomorom, Dukmas. That's the, the same idea when we talk about Shikhno Beiro Vaha Kocho, as if now, yes, he's, he's split up, of course, controlling everything, but we've got this idea of above and below. And that comes from this posuk, as we say, God praised Shechilek, as the Gemara says here, Chilek Masov Umolach Alem, still acting as the king over them, but splitting, and that's what we find in day two, where you've got a split between Elyonim and Tachtonim. Then we go to day three, Bishlishi. Elokim Nitzov Ba'adas Kale. This is taken from chapter 82, pay base. Um, Hashem, if you like, El Nitzov standing, if we can take that word, um, Ba'adas Kale. What's Adas Kale? Means a, a, a divine, if you like, Ada, community, um, assembly. Have a look at Rashi. Uh, well, we haven't got the Rashi yet. Uh, what, why do we say Elokim Nitzov Ba'adas Kale? 
al shem shegilo eretz b'choch mosai. Here we find v'heichin tevel la adosai. What do you mean the land is? Because that's when we first start seeing the words. Uh, we see is Rashi shegilo eretz mokoim matzav adosai. This is the place where the assembly can stand. Well, because now the earth, as we've seen, the 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 land mass is visible. It's not just covered with water. You've got the land mass uh, visible. So that's why Shegilo Eretz, as the Gemara has said here, Bechochmos of Ahichin Tevel There's now got the opportunity. We've got the land mass becoming visible. As Rashi says here, Beseiro Er Hayabosho. The land mass is seen, Bashlishi Nema. Therefore, again, it reflects, it corresponds to that third day of creation. We've got the same thing happening here in this um, chapter of Tilim that they would sit, we would sing. Next, Boravi, the fourth day of creation. Boravi, hoi omrim keil nekomois Hashem. Oh, quite strong words there. Keil nekomois. What's the keil nekomois? It means normally... It's normally it's actually exacting punishment. Uh, Kale the so, has... so can you just go back? Why, why, why is the third? Day? I don't understand the connection with um, Elokim Nitzor Kale. It's allowing the Adar, in other words, where the land must becomes available, as Rashi says. Um, Shegilo Eretz Bochachmosoi, all available for his Adar. So this is Elohim Nitzor Ba'adas Kael. You've now got an Adol which oh, can survive because the land must be coming, becoming visible. That's what we're seeing there. As Rashi says, V'seiru Eha Yabosha, the land mass available for the Adol, um, as mentioned in this Posuk. Yeah? Then we've got Ravi, yeah. and this is interesting, Kael the Komois. Um, now, when you say it's as you see, Gemara explains, I'll shame Sheboro Chamo Ulavona, and some uh, Gisor say further, the sun, the moon, the stars. But watch out, they are beautiful, the sun, the moon, the stars. But beware, Osili Pora Meovdeim. Have a look at Rashi. Birvi, the fourth favorite of creation, we've got the sun, the moon, the stars, but watch out um, that you shouldn't be, um, as we've said here, Liporame of them, those people who are worshipping, sun worshippers, I don't mean for suntan, I mean uh, uh, worshipping the sun, the moon, the stars, um, watch out, that's why it says, kill the commas, there will be, there will be punishment, retribution for those people who follow the sun, the moon, the stars and, and worshipping them um, uh, rather than, yes, that's the day of their creation, but beware um, not to, to be following them. However bright and it once one understands the, the, the colossal size of some of these stars, uh, and it, of course you've got the sun and the heat, the light, and um, we can understand why people yeah. may well have been following that and worshipping the the sun, the moon, the stars, etc. Um, so, yes, there's that warning, Kel Nekomois Hashem, which means um, punishment if people do follow. That's an Avodah Zorah. So that's for the fourth day. The fifth day, Harninu, is a beautiful one, Harninu Lelukim Uzenu. Harninu is a normal allotion of arena, singing. Lelukim Uzenu, Hashem of our strength. Harninu Lelukim Uzenu. Why would be singing particularly on this day? Lovely Rashi, uh, Gemara here. Al Shem Shebora Oifos Vedogim. This is the beginning of creation of um, uh, life. Where we see the oifos, the birds, the fish, Look at Rashi here. Shabora oifos v'dogim l'shabeach l'shmo. On the the fifth day, we're finding that the birds, the fish, kisha odom roya oifos mushunim. 
all these incredible birds. It lends itself to give praise. In fact, the same thing with the, the fish. Um, nowadays, of course, we are getting deeper and deeper. We still haven't actually got to the uh, the lower ends of the of Pacific, etc., where you've got these most incredible fish um, that we've seen. Some people may have so what's seen. The content of the content of that shit It doesn't. Um, no, that's something it doesn't no, relate to this. Right. The rest of it is now. Nah, the rest of it is you were talking about the shofar. That's true. But starting off with praising God. How Nina, that's why it said on that fifth day, and that's why we mentioned last time what happens if Rosh Hashanah falls on that day, because you're quite right. It then moves on to talk about Tikkun Bachode Shofar Bakesi. When we talk about the might of Hashem with the glory of the uh, the creatures that are being created, then we move on to Tikkun Bachode Shofar. We're talking about that same king. The time will come when we're talking about Rosh Hashanah, a day of judgment, because the king, and we've seen now the glory, not just the, the size, but also the beauty of some of the creatures, then moves on in that same chapter to talk about Tikko Bachoide Shofar Bakesilim Chagenu. Yes, we're talking there about the king who is control, not just controlling, but also the beauty that we see in the creation. So that lends itself to be the, uh, the ruler, and therefore we find the Rosh Hashanah. But it's the first possible that, we're, with, that, um, that corresponds really to that day of the week. The fifth day, where we're talking about these beautiful creatures, um, and therefore, um, as that's created on the fifth day, that's a very suitable um, chapter to, to sing. But you're right, there are going to be other references in there to Rosh Hashanah too. And therefore, on Rosh Hashanah, as we've seen, that's also sung for the Musaf. Um, so there, that's the day of um, the fifth day. What about the sixth day? Bashishi hoy omrim, Hashem moloch geus lovesh. Um, Hashem's reign. So it's just one more. So the connection with Rosh Hashanah is what then? It's the connection. Is the net, with the, that's the following. Rosh Hashanah is what? Is that Shion Brias Olam? Yeah, it's the following on from there, where we got Tikkun Bachoide Shofar Pakeseliem Chagenu, clearly a reference to the Shofar, which is blown when there is no moon. Actually, Pakeseliem Chagenu. We explained that earlier on. Yeah. Um, so that's why, yes, relevant to Rosh Hashanah. But it's also relevant, the first part of this, this special reno that we're singing when we see some of the creatures. Yeah. So it's also appropriate for Thursday too. So that you've got like a double okay. a double reference, a double correspondence on that day. But the Rosh Hashanah then, bit is just coincidental. The Rosh Hashanah yes, bit is coincidental well, then yeah, to I this mean, topic. To, as far as this is concerned. Yeah, yeah I mean, absolutely. it's not exacting. No, I, I, yeah, agreed. It's really, we're focusing on the first yeah. part, first part of the... Uh, the, the, the pot, well, the first possible, okay. but you're right, it's also got rele uh, relevance and references to Rosh Hashanah, therefore, it's also used on Rosh Hashanah as well. So it's, it's like a double usage. Um, then we've got the sixth day, Hashem Moloch, Hashem reigned. Geus Lovish, Lovish means he's, if you like, wearing. Um, clothed in, if you're using those terms, anthropomorphism, of course. L uh, lovush, um, what's what's this? Geos, grandeur, you'd say, geos, yeah? I'll shame why, why is that possible? Or that chapter appropriate for the sixth day? Because as we know, on the sixth day of creation, she goma malachto umola chalem, um, this this idea of the the grandeur of Hashem Moloch Hashem has reigned, completing the, uh, the 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 whole Bria, and then finally we've got Bashvi Hoy Omrim Mizma Shiliom Hashavos, which of course very appropriate indeed. But interesting, look what the Gemara does with this. You would have said Mizma Shiliom Hashavos, talking about the seventh day. The Gemara says, Liyom Shekulo Shabbos. That's interesting. It's a reference, Mizmar Shir Liyom HaShabbos, 
says the Gemara. Well, look at the Rashi, please. Leyom Shekulo Shabbos. It's talking about the day, and of course we're talking about the day. Elef Shon in Bienecho Kiyo Mesmo. We're talking about a thousand years. We'll see more about this now. She Osid Ha'olom Yios Chorev. We talk, yes, we're now five, we're getting close, aren't we? Um, in the counting of the years, five, seven, eight, two, where this Gemara is telling us from the, at the year 6,000, it will be Chorev in as much as Ein Odom Bechol Hamlochos Shobzos. Everything comes to a rest in year 6,000. Everything comes to rest. It looks like it's a time for, um, you know, pay payment, if you like. It's almost like an Olam Habor situation from the year 6,000. As I say, it's, it's not that far off. Um, that is, so that's what we're referring to there. Nizma Shir Leyoim HaShabbos, not only talking about Shabbos itself, but talking about the, where the world will come to an end in as much as there's no further malacha taking place, but a time for payment, a time for resting in this world, almost like a, a shemitah, but this time it's a thousand years worth. Yeah. Fascinating. Says the Gemara, until now, Omar ab Nechemya, Ma ro chachomim lachalik. There seems to be a difference in the way we were interpreted the first six days and the songs that are sung and the last. Why? Ma ro chachomim lachalik bin haprokim o edu. Have a look at Rashi. Ma yom shakula shabbos. No, Rashi doesn't say that. Rashi is talking on the next piece. What does Rashi, the Gomorrah mean here? Ma ro'u chachomim lachalik. There seems to be a difference. We've mentioned here, the Gomorrah's mentioned, that that Yom Shekulo Shabbos is not just talking about the Sabbath day. It's talking about a full period of time where everything will come to a stop. Why, when we looked at the previous days, we seem to be reflecting on the past. For example, the day when the sun and the moon and the stars, we spoke about the fish, and that's Haruninu. That's going back to the time of creation, where on day seven, we seem to be looking forward. Why is that? Well, it's not a why, but it says, Why rabbis? Did you change over in your interpretation as to why we sing Mizmo Shilioma Shabos? Continue the Gemara. Ella, but it's not what you thought. But yeah, the first six days, yes. Borishan Shekona Vehiknevishalid Boilama agreed. Yet the first day he was unique in, on, alone, hadn't created anything. Basheni Shechilek Masov, the same as we said before, remember the second day of creation, the splitting between the, the, the water above the water below. Bashlishi, uh, remember the land, the land mass becomes visible, agreed with that. Heichin Tebeladosoi, preparing the land for humanity. Borvi agreed the fourth day, Bachamolabonov. Uh, and therefore, it's a warning to people, don't worship the sun, the moon. I agree with you, says Rabbi Nehemiah. And therefore, it's very appropriate to sing Haraninu on day five. I agree, and therefore, Hashem Moloch, very suitable. Hashem reigned, reigned supreme, having Finish the creation, yes, but Bashvi al shame she shavas. The reason why we see the same is mostly shavas is because it's the day that there was rest, not looking into the future. 
How about now we can see this Rashi again? Ma Robi Ro Rabbi Akiva Lachale Ben Apashis Yehuda. Remember the first part is Rabbi Akiva, and this is now Rabbi Nachemia. She Kol beginning of Rashi. She Kol Sheishes Yomim Neemorim Haprokim Halalu Al Shem Sheovah. Rabbi Akiva said the first six days talks about the past. Why did you say Shel Shabbos Al Shem Lahabo? So therefore, what Ram Nehemiah did is he explains, yes, I agree with you. The seventh day you do say Mizma Shilio Mashabas, but it refers to the day of rest, not going into the future. Says the Gemara Uko Mifligi Bodarav Katina. They argue in the statement of Rav Katina. Why? Do Oma Rav Katina. Shisa alfe shoni hava alma. The world in its current form will remain for 6,000 years. Vachad choruv. And one, when we spoke about this churban, it means it will come to a standstill. Exactly what that means, I can't tell you, but that's what this Gemara is saying. Shenema, the Posuk says, Veniskav Hashem Levado Bayoim Tahu. What's this Veniskov? This posuk, another posuk, Hashem will be Niskov, high, exalted on that day. This is a posuk that we find in Yeshaya, Isaiah, the Niskov Hashem Levado by Yomahu. That's referring to when there'll be no further creations taking place and the world will come to a basic standstill, we're saying here. Yeah? Says the Gemara, Omar Abaya, Turei Choruv. It won't just be for one, it will be actually 2,000 years. Again, the thing, concepts are not that clear about, but 2,000, it will be twice as long. It's not just 1,000, it's 2,000. Shenema. Yechayenu miyomoyim. It will yechayenu from Russian chius. We will be revived miyomayim after two days break. There's a break of two days here. Have a look at Rashi. So they're arguing about this Rav Katina. Why? Why Rav Katina? According to Rav Nechemia, less lay to Rav Katina. He doesn't support the view of Rav Katina. What did Rav Katina say? Rav Katina said there will be this one day, equivalent to a thousand years, of a shovas, a break, a rest in the creation itself, not just in the creation, in the world. And therefore, Rav Katina said there will be one day. Ram Nechemia less later of Katina. Ella, he supports the view of Abaya. What did Abaya say? Abaya said there will be two days. Therefore, look at Rashi Hilkoch. Leka lemeima al shem yom echod shekuloi Shabbos doho train in who. This is the point. What he's saying is this. According to Rav um, according to Abaya, there are going to be 2,000 years or two days, that's a, a, equivalence, of this Choreb, where the world comes to a standstill. You therefore can't say Mizma Shir Liyom HaShabbos refer, refers to the, that day, because it won't just be a day, a day equivalent to 1,000 years. It will be 2,000 years, and therefore, he says that does not talk about that epoch, that time, because it says, Mizma Shir Liyom HaShabos, but he says, Mizma Shir Liyom HaShabos goes back to the beginning of creation, and therefore, we are then saying and praising about that day of, the, the day of Shabbos, the day of rest in the creation. Whereas, if you say there is only 1,000 years of this break, where it's Choreb, then you can say Mizma Shir Liyom HaShabos 
refers to the, if there's going to be um, a 2000 year gap, Mizmo Shiliyom HaShabbos will be talking about therefore Mizmo Shiliyom HaShabbos from the beginning of time going back to the creation. So we've got this difference between whether Mizmo Shiliyom HaShabbos is talking about the past or you say it is talking about the future time period, and as we as we mentioned before, Elef Shon in Bienech, a thousand years is often referred to as a day in the eyes of Hashem. It's one day, one period. So that Mizmo Shili Yom Hashabbos is talking about the period after we've completed the six thousand years, and where the the it's then a, a time period of rest, like a shmita in this. Um, in, in the world formation, etc., um, and that's the reference that we've got. Therefore, is Moshiliyah Mashavos. So, the, of course, the simplest way is according to Rav um, uh, Rav Nehemia, where Ms. Moshiliyah Mashavos doesn't look about the look to the future, but it goes back in the past, and therefore every one of the days that we mention, where the Levim were singing um, with their um, with their music a huge orchestra that they had, um, this reflected the days of the creation rather than looking forward um, into future time periods, which again is beyond really our comprehension. Um, says the Gemara, what about, that's all very well the days of the week, and we're talking about the Tomid in the morning and the Tomid in the afternoon, they would sing with music, um, all these Mizma Shiliyom Shabbos for Shabbos, or everyone, uh, as we've just mentioned there, its own particular chapter of Tehillim when they brought the communal offering in the morning and in the afternoon. What happened on Shabbos, though? On Shabbos, of course, you've got a Musaf. Says the Gemara now, here we'll see, we're going to go into Ha'azinu. We will need a Chumish in a moment. Um, what did they sing in Musaf of Shabbos? Rashi says, the Musaf the Shabbos, my shir omru. What shir did they sing on Shabbos Musaf? When they brought the Musaf offering, um, particularly normally with the... Um, wine libation the pouring of the wine there would be singing um i don't know if you got much of the music from that time but uh there is actually one tune here that they sing in yerushalayim which they do say dates back to the time of the uh of the temple times uh, but anyway al is asking what chapter was it from Tehillim? was it from tanakh did they sing on shabbos musaf now, let's say we've only, we're only talking about the lyrics here. Um, we're not talking about the actual music. I'm afraid I haven't got the music for you, but we have got the words. Now, if you can read that word, you've done well. Have you got those words? Haziv loch, but in ver There's a commas there. It's lift, it stands for something. Have you got that? Haziv loch. What's haziv? Ziv is normally splendor. We've had this word as ziv is beauty, splendor. What's, what's that? What is that all about? Have a look. Continue the Gemara. Those letters, and there are six of them, hey, zayin, yud, vov, Lamet Chof is what they would sing on Shabbos. How does that work? Yeah. Oma Rav Chonon, Barova, Oma Rav, Kederech Shechalukin Khan, Kach Chalukin Bebeis Hakneses. The way they divided up here is also how they are divided in shul. What is going on? Have a look, please, at the Rashi. But beforehand, if you've got a Chumish Devorim, it will be very useful. Or we can 
If you like, Peter, you can bring up Hazinu for us all. Let's go to Hazinu, if you don't mind. Oh, wow. That was about the quickest I've seen. <clears throat> Great performance there. And Peter, Ha'azinu. Have a look as we scroll down. And where you get to Shaney. Keep more. Oh, oh, he doesn't tell you where to stop. Or does it? No, he doesn't tell you where Shaney is. Okay, can you go back? And I think it tells you the Cedrus. Or maybe that is what you've got there. I'm surprised it doesn't tell you. No, go further back. It doesn't tell you where Shaney is here, or does it? No. Have a look. I think you can scroll, not scroll. If you go to Safari and go, did you go to Cedrus? Peter? Yes. Oh. Well, let's, so, I'll go back. Go back and I, let's let's pick this up. The Tanakh. Let's go to Deuteronomy. I, and it should tell you. I don't know if you've got that then. So it's chapter 32. Let's try that. Let's see if this works. Hazinu. I'll see. Oh, you're, are you go. No, come down. Oh, let, all right. We should, let's try that. Hazinu. Oh, Hazinu one. What's Hazinu one look like? What does that mean? Where does it go to? How far down does it go? Scroll down. Verse six, isn't it? Yeah, it is verse six, but it doesn't actually doesn't mark it here. Okay, so you will have to have a chumish with you, I think. And let's just, let's try one other thing, Peter. Go to chapter thirty-two. What happens if you do that rather than go? Let's go back to Safaria yeah. texts, Tanakh. Let's try Deuteronomy thirty-two. Does it tell you? Does it split it for us? No, it's the same. It's the same. It doesn't actually tell you where where the breaks are. If you've got a chumish, anybody? Yes, um, I've got one, but there's a well, little I, as, there's a little asterisk on the uh, safari on the okay, verse. Okay, going. Maybe that's what it's verse, verse six. Where's the asterisk? Oh yeah, in the wrong place. <laughs> Sorry. Oh no. Uh, it should be. It should be verse seven. It would should be verse seven. Zohar. Okay. Zohar. So here we are. This verse seven. Then go down. And keep going till you get to verse 13, I think. Yarkiveu. Let me get finished myself. If we're following Peter, and we've also got a chumish in front of us, we can see where the stops are. Where, where the breaks are. Yaruki Vehu, that's impossible 13. The next one, keep scrolling down, will take you to positive 19. By Yar. And then we go from there on to. Now, this is where it gets tricky. Now, don't look any further, but have a look at Rashi now. Stop there. Have a look at Rashi. Haziv Loch. Beauty is with you. I'm doing the Rashi. Those letters stand for the first letter of the Psukim as you go through what's called, have a look at Rashi, Parshas Shiras Hazinu. The shira, the song of Hazinu, is split in that way for the Levian to be singing. Chalukim or Cholkim Oisa, have you got it in the Rashi? Le Shisha Parokim. You can divide it up into six places where there's a break. Horishoin is Hazinu. 
Thank you. The second was Zachar. The third, Yarki Vehu. Have you got Yarki Vehu? Uh, I think. Where's your Yarki Vehu? Is possible 13. 13, thank you. Here's your 13. Yarki Vehu. So this is the way this shiro, this song, is divided up. Yarki Veo Alboma said, what about the four? Now, Vaya, that one's still okay. Vaya Hashem Vayinots, that's Posuk Yudtes. Ad Khan, now this is very interesting, Rashi here. Until now, you've got breaks of six Sukim each. Now we're going to divide up not in six psukim necessarily. And Rashi says here, fascinating, Rashi says eight psukim, the Perik. Where is the Hamishi? That's Lule. Yeah. It's ten, ten verses. Lule Kas Oyev. Have you got that Lule? Uh... Well, we've got Lu Chochmuhu. Which, where's, what's Rashi referring to when he says Lule? Can you see that? 27. Have a look at Possum 27. There's your Lule. Right? Interesting. He calls that the next stop. And the final one is Ki Yodin Hashem Amor. As Possum 36. Yeah? Ki Yodin. Right? So there are a couple of points here. Rashi is splitting up Hazinu with those with those letters Hey Zion Yudvov Lamet Chof in a different way than we've got in our Chumish today. Okay, do you understand that? Rashi has got. Have a look at Tosfos on this page. Has Yuloch, Hazinu, Zachar. In other words, this is the song. The song that you're singing on Shabbos is the song taken, not Shiras Hayom. We'll get to that another occasion. But it's the song of Hazinu, which is divided up for singing on Shabbos. The Gemara will deal with whether this was over a six-week period or not, that's another piece, not for today. But at the moment, we're focusing on those letters. Hey, Zayin, Yudvob is the first letter of the breaks in Hazinu for the Levian. Now, look at Toysavus. Toysavus says it's Hazinu. And let's compare with what we got in our own Chumish today. Then we've got Zachar. So far, so good. Yarki Vehu. So far, so good. Possum 13. Vayar. Oh, that's more like it. Look at Vayar. Is Possum 19. Still got the same letter, that Vov. Then we've got Lule. Where's that Lule? That was your Lule for possible 27. Still not like ours. And then you've got the Kiyodin, which is possible 36. So there's that final half, Key. 
Kein Kosov bis vor him, says Toysfus, Vachain Bukuntrus, and similarly in Rashi, Vachain Haminug. And so, says Toysfus, in the time of Toysfus, was the Minug, because if you remember in the Gomorrah, we said this is split for the Levim, and it's also split the way we split up the Alias when we lay in Ha'azinu. So, so far, we've seen in Rashi and in Tosfus not actually what is our custom, but continue Tosfus. Can I just ask, where was the origin of the of the division of the somebody was asking the other day? When did it go back to Kabbalah? Yeah, we can see this, the, the division of the citrus. You can see to... there's an argument, though, as to what those letters stand for. So, yeah, you're right. Yeah, but I mean, when did it. Um... When, when was the Masora so this, um, is well, it from the Masoranese? I mean, when, when it does sounds this like go? you had pretty much a free hand to divide up. You divided up the center. Don't forget, in some places, they were laying uh, over a three-year period. Uh, so you would divide, as long as yeah, you've got your ideas, yeah. that's fine. But it's later that you've got the actual split in the way that we find it today. The Gomorrah here just says, this Hazivloch, Praise is to you, splendor, yeah. light is to you. And you can see, according to Rashi, it's split for the Levian. And the Gemara says, in the same way it's split for the Levian, it's split for the shuls. So clearly in France, in Troy, a worm where, where Rashi was, it was split not in the way that we see it in our Chumash today, and similarly with Tosfus. However, complete the Tosfus, however, if you go to Maseches Sofrim, the last few are Vayishman. Where's your Vayishman? Please shout out. Vayishman is in Posso 15. Lu. Where's that? That was coming. Uh, Where is possible the Lu? The Lu got it as you scroll down. After Vayishman, you've got uh, Lu. That's possible. That is the same as ours. Lu. That's possible. Twenty nine. So the Lamad is not what we saw in Rashi with this Lu lay, but it's possible. Twenty nine. You got twenty nine, and that is actually where our Hamishi is. And then he brings Rabbein Chananel, who says that the Vov is Vayar, and then Lu. So you've got your Lu there, Posachovtes, and you've got Vayar. Now let's go back to Ravi. Vayar, that does fit in with us. There's your Posach Yutes. You with me? Have I confused everybody here? Possibly you test is Vaya, and that is where we stop. So then we've got a stop in Vaya, a stop in Lu Chochmu, and then the final one, not mentioned, but we finish. Ki Esa, look at that, we go right up to Possum 40, still the same lettering. Possible 40, key, there's your final cuff. Well, it's not final, it is in the, um, the, the acronym. It's an acronym, Haziv Loch, mnemonic, um, and it's linked in that way. So interesting, you see from here, Rashi, Toysfus, they had different minhogim, where actually the stops were, and what we do today actually doesn't fit with certainly not with Rashi and the first shot of Tosfus. Um, so that's number one. We can see that the splits are different, but you still are having the, that formation, hey, zayin, yud, vob, lamad, chof. And now for another piece. Look at the Rashi, if you remember. Let's go with Rashi's view. Not the same as ours. He said it's split 
with six psukim at a time. Until you get to Vayar Hashem the what was that? That was Possel 19, isn't it? Yes, Possel 19, you've got six threes, and then you've got the Possel 19. Now, here's a fascinating Rashi. Rashi goes on and says, but from here on, now granted, Rashi's got a different split compared to us. But look what Rashi says. Umikamba elech. Shmone psukim the peric each. If like it's a chapter for them, it's like a break. Is made up of eight psukim. Why? What's his next one? The next one is lule. Now this is meant to be eight psukim later. Is lule eight psukim later? Lule Ka'as Oyev, that's meant to be eight Pesukim after, so in other words, you've got 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, so far, so good. Yeah? We've got eight Pesukim. And what's the final one? Ki Yodin Hashem Amoy. Where is that Kiyodin? That's in Posuk 36. What have we got there? Kiyodin Hashem Amo. Is that eight Psukim? I think it's nine. Yeah. It's not eight. We're meant to have two eights here. Mikam Elech Shmona Psukim Le Perek. So we've got 18, we've got another six, another, no, we've got six threes, then we're going to have eight, so that should take us up to Posuk, 18 plus six is 24, correct? Does it take us up to Posuk 24? So let's start this again, make sure we're getting this right. We've gone right up to Posuk Vaya Hashem Vayinots. Actually, that's four breaks. So there's your 24, right? Is that right? Again, Hazinu Zachor Yakiveu Borvi Vaya Hashem Vayinots. Where is that posuk? That's 19. Posuk 19. Right. So we've got 19. That's three breaks. We're up to the fourth one now. And now we're meant to have, after having 18 posukim, we're meant to have another eight. Have we got eight? Yeah. Yes. Fine. Then Rashi says, we're meant to have another eight which will take you up to 26 plus 8 is 34, up to the final one. And that is meant to be Kiyodin. We're one out, correct? Are we one out? Yeah, there's nine. Yeah. They've got nine. The nine pesukim there. So now another fascinating point, and this links up to a Gemara in Kiddushin, Daf Lamed Aleph. If you can please, Peter, if I can call upon you to look up a Gemara Kiddushin, Daf Lamed Omed Aleph, thirty A, in Kiddushin. Have you got Kiddushin? Here we go. Going straight to it. Okay. 
This is a question actually. The Rashash asks, we'll go straight to the answer. Yeah, are we okay? Ah, whoa, straight to it. Well done there. To, towards the end of the possible, the end of the uh, page 38, just as you scroll down. The Gemara here is discussing which are also beautiful Gemara here, very interesting, talking about where are the middle words of the Torah. Now, as you go up a little bit further, a, bit, a little bit further, a little bit further, very interesting Gemara. Oh, here we are. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's talking about with the G. And uh, scroll down one more. Oh, stop. Whoa. Yes. Boy, Rabbi Yosem, what is the middle word of the whole Sefer Torah? Or the middle, how many psukim are there? It goes through all of that. Then it says, how many psukim are there? What's the, the, the middle of all the psukim? The central one? Whoa. Says the Gemara, b'psuki nami lo b'ki'inam. We are not, oh, he actually is translated for you here. We are not experts about verses either. And you can see there in the Gemara that there were some psukim that they divided in a way different to what we've got. And it looks like this is another example of that, that Rashi must have had as you said, Malcolm, there are nine psukim, there are not eight that we've got. Um, so we can see that the actual psukim, there's yes, the words, the letters, as we know, there are no full stops, um, but it's lamed. But how you actually have the full sentences, it can be read in so many different ways. And you can see from this Gemara, we are not experts about, yes, we've got a tradition, and that's, of course, how you've laid it today. Um, but actually, how the psukim are divided up, you can see there was a, an argument about it. Um, and just to conclude, let's go back to the Rashash, if we can, on our Gemara. This is your point. If you can go back to our Gemara, Peter, on Safaria, And we'll finish with this. Uh, Al Gamara, thank you very much. Uh, we are on 30 A, 30 A, I think we're on to, of 31 A, quite right. Drop down a little bit to our, when it says, talks about Bashani, Bashlishi, got all the translation there. Thank you. Can roll it. Keep scrolling. Hamishi, Shishi, and then when it talks about Shabbos, a bit more. Ah, oh, ah, oh, yeah, a bit more, a bit more. Keep going. Oh, there we are. No, no, one more. Sorry, a bit more, a bit more. But can believe me. No, no, sorry. This is going back on the Gemara again. Keep going, come and forget. Oh, but yeah, get a bit more. Let's go all the Gemara that we've seen today. Then it should say, no, go, keep going. This is all still Rabbi Nehemiah. So, no, scroll down, sorry. No, the other way. No, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. Till we get to, uh, no, a bit more. Eight, nine. I don't know how he splits it up here, the numbering system. Keep going. Oh, there we are, Muslim Shabbos. Double click on the Musfei de Shabbos. If you double click there, it should come up. Just double click, right? Then you should go for commentary. We want to go for the Rish uh, no, Ra not Rashi, Rishash. Hopefully it's on here. Ah, oh, for Rish yes. Rishash, the 19th century. Ra, here we are. 
This is Rashi. Remember the Rashi we looked at. At kan shisha psukim leperik mikam ve'ele. From here on, there are eight psukim in each break. According to Rashi's way, he was breaking up the sedra. The tzorich here, he says, it needs to be looked into because if you look in our foreign, min lule ad ki yodin, exactly as Malcolm had said, there are nine pesukim. And I, he says, of course, until now, lo motzosi mi said Nobody's actually raised this. Um, Although, look in, the, in brackets, he's added a comment here. Can, in one, the Sefer called the Ie Hayom quotes, when Rashi says, he means at least eight. He doesn't mean necessarily exactly eight. Uh, yeah, okay, that is one way you could look at it, but if Rashi does say eight psukim. Uh, yeah, it's funny to say eight when you mean eight or nine. But anyway, no, it could be eight or more. But look, that's, so anyway, he's raised it. And then he's got another issue. Because if you look in Toysavus, one of the suggestions of Toysavus, Gamashe Kosova Toysavus, that according to Masech the Sofrim, it's by Yishman. Do you remember what uh, he meant from Masech Sofrim? Look very quickly, if you've got a Chumish in front of you. By Yishman. Just the last two here, Vayishman and the Lu. Where what psukim are we looking at? Shout out if you found it. Vayishman. Uh, I've lost it as well. Vayishman Yeshurum Vayivot. Which posuk is that? Vayishman. Anybody got it? Wants to shout it out? Um, I can't find it either, actually. She was got by Yishma. Anybody got it? Oh. 15. Thank you, sir. Thank you. By Yishman, he's got a gap, according to this, to by, by Yishman. Up to the word by Yishman and then Lu, right? By Yishman. By Yishman is possible. By Yishman. Then he's got Lu. Where's the next one? By Yishman. By Yishman is possible 15. Yes, one of them was by you. That all we need is that by Yishman. If by Yishman was his stop, and the previous one was on Posuk Yud Gimel, is Yar Kiveu, how many Pesukim have you got in between? Like we've got Yar Kiveu, is Posuk 13. If you remember, You've got Hazinu Zachar Yarki Vehu is in Posuk 13. Instead of Vayar, he has Vayishman. Yeah? Well, Vayishman is in Posuk 15, which means you've only got two Psukim. And we do not allow an Aliyah of less than three Psukim. So that's what the Rashash asks. I won't bother you, Peter. But that was the rest of that Rashash there. Where the Rishash asks another question, but according to Tosfos, we've only got two psukim for a, and it's all very well for the Levim singing a song of two psukim, but you can't do that in shul because you've got to have three psukim. Yeah, um, and that's what he raises that question as well. And as we've said before, so it's another proof that you can see the division of the psukim that they had was not necessarily the same division that we've got today, because based on that Gemara we saw in Kedushin, the division of the psukim may have been different. 
Yeah, so I say that's also fascinating based on that Gemara that we saw in Kedushim. But we will stop here. We're running um, well over time. Um, I say fascinating as it is. Um, but what we're saying here is that the bottom line is for Musaf, they sang this Shira from Hazinu, not the Shira Sayom, the Shira itself that we know. This is also called the Shira Hazinu. Um, and that was used on Shabbos for the Revim, as indeed it's used in Hazinu when we get to that Sedra. Um, and then the Gemara now will continue on. It does talk about the other Shira itself, um, but that's for, I say, another day. So with that, gentlemen, I'll leave you. Sorry, quite uh, some esoteric things going on here. Um, but that's the Gemara. Um, but I say it, it's all fascinating. Don't, don't forget that Hazivloch. So in fact, what we've got in our own Chumish, just to conclude, what we've got and our Chumish does follow that pattern of letters, albeit different to Rashi, different to Tosfus, and it only comes up at the end here with Rabbein Hananam. You with me in Tosfus, but we do divide up that Shira with those letters, which again an acronym. The word Hazivloch, praise, beauty is to you, uh, and that's how we divide that up. And that's very important actually, because even if you are making Hosofas, I don't know whether your shul does make extras, um, depending on how many Ali or I say how many Chiyuvi maybe. Um, it's important that those stop normally, the extras should come in after that. Stick to what the Gemara said, this Hazivloch, beauty to you. Have those as breaks. Oh, we've got in our Chumish. Only after you've actually covered that, if you want to make some extra Hosofas, do so. Of course, you need a three Pesukim for each person. But we do stick to that, those words here. So it's a very good... Okay, I'm not sure you often be challenged as a nice quiz. Hazivloch, the wording, the psukim of Hazinu divided in that way. I think there's a question for Malcolm, just before we close. Okay, just a, a sort of a big question, but I big mean, I'm quiz. not expecting an answer, but um, mm. since in this, what we've been looking at, there have been quotations from Hazinu. Yes. And I mean, what my question is in the whole of the Talmud, yes, does the whole of the Humash forget about the Tanakh, but I mean, does the whole of the Humash get cited? In other words, is if you looked at all the different discussions, you're pretty much fine. Yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't I'm not sure you say has it, it possible. I'm sure. There'll be people who tell you that particular posig is not mentioned, but almost all the psukim will have a reference somewhere, particularly mm. um, when you're talking about, you know, m moving on to if you're, if you're talking about halachas themselves, then yes, those psukim would come up all in their relevant places. So um, if it's financial matters, it will come up into the Masechtas, Bob Matziah, Bob Abbasah, etc. If you're talking about the Yom Tovim, that will come up in Moed. So pretty much the Psukim do appear in in, in the Gemara. Um, so if there was no, if there was no so earlier source, the Talmud could be there, would have the whole... No, you, you will find it. I, actually, I... Almost every posuk and a very the the, the very first mm. um, there's a in some of the older chumashim you what's called toldus ar in some of the, the big chumashim what's called the mikros gedolas there's a pirish called the toldus ar and he mentions there every posuk that's cited and that's without a computer um, that's just using his head he writes <laughs> down every where that posuk appears anywhere amazing right. um, that's what very early later we've got what's called the Torah Tamima Chumish which is a beautiful Chumish Torah Tamima uh, who's the son of the Or HaShulchan um, of Epstein uh, yeah the Torah Tamima Chumish does look at every single posuk brings the Gemara where it comes from it could be a Medrash gives it and and then a discussion about it so not just quoting the posse there's a, a commentary underneath uh the Torah, beautiful the Torah to me i think now it's even available in english Torah to me, not sure 
Um, but a beautiful comment. But no, Ian, I'll answer your question. Yeah, I think almost every possibility you're going to find a reference somewhere. Um, and uh, say the total of Saron is a good place to look if you want a reference to that possum uh, anywhere. And if somebody else raised something or just no. Oh, thank you very much. Sorry, well over time here, particularly for me because I'm I've got to go to the twenty to twelve Marib now. Thank you very much, gentlemen. No shortage here.